G'day guys, Jai Corball here from Essen and Bombers. I'm here with the boys in the studio. We just pumped out a nice potty. Um, I love me four wheel driving and whatnot, but give it a listen. Jack, I'll leave you with a couple of trade one sign across my desk. That trade talk is heating up. Caldwell from the Giants, out of contract. Essendon, St Kilda, a number of clubs, I'm told, chasing Caldwell from the Giants. That trade talk is heating up. Heating up. Heating up. Heating up. Heating up. Heating up. Trade talk is heating up. Caldwell from the Giants. Essendon, St Kilda, a number of clubs, I'm told. Chasing, 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 chasing. Out of contract. Out of contract. Contract. Out of, I'm told. Caldwell, and the Giants get their response, and Jai Caldwell has his first goal in the AFL. Hey you guys, we did have some technical issues in this one, which is a bit annoying, so the audio does sound a bit funny at times. Apologies for that, but I'm just going to go straight into the episode, so here it is with Jai Caldwell. Enjoy. You guys ready? By the way, yeah. I, my laptop went on on Facebook. It's just not. Oh. Just in case you thought. <laughs> That's alright, don't stress. Should I play the music? Yeah, crack in. Lockie, back in the studio. It's very, very good. You're about a metre away from me as opposed to 100 k's. How are you, mate? Oh, mate, super pumped. Not quite keeping to the 1.5 metre rule anymore, but, mate, if I could get any closer to you, I would. You're looking spectacular today. Oh, thank you very much, mate. Your, your cap, like I mentioned before, I, I like the look of it. Tell us a bit about who we've got just sitting right opposite us. I'm loving this. Oh, uh, well, he's an absolutely young star of the competition. Uh, he's just been telling us how he bench presses 200 <laughs> kilos for his warm-up. Uh, star midfielder for the Essendon Bombers, Jai Corwell. How are we today? Good lads, how are we? Oh, very, 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 it's very. Been a long good. time coming, hasn't it? Oh, it's been <laughs> a long it's time been... coming. I was having a look. I think it was like October two or something. Yeah, first um, um, this in, we've but... had a lot of rescheduling, but we've finally made it and we're here to do it. So it's very good. Mate, it was well worth the wait. You know, I think it just made me more excited for the conversation, Jai, and to see you <laughs> as well, so close. Uh, uh, so close to me is just uh, exciting. We might have to cut that bit out because I stuffed that up anyway. So, <laughs> so off season, we know you're back into training now, but yep. we don't want to just hear about the fact that you're just running uh, 10 second flat, 100 meters. You know, what did you get up to over your off season break? Um, it's going to sound pretty boring. Um, in other off seasons, I usually do a fair bit, but uh, this off season was pretty limited with COVID restrictions. So, I went back home, back to Bendigo. Um, I was there for probably four or five weeks. Didn't really do anything exciting, but um, it was good though. I saw my family, um, all my friends back home. I got on the tools actually as well with my old man because he's a plumber. Um, other than that, I was training, doing the little things, but no, nah, that's that's all I reckon. Love that, mate. And we were, we were talking before, we were wondering, what are the, obviously we've hardly got any COVID restrictions just for normal people now, but for footy players, you don't want to cause an outbreak in the club or anything, but can you just like do what you want or does the club say, don't do this, don't like do this? Like right now? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's sort of, it's try, it's things like don't try and go to Chadston, don't try and go to shopping malls, like um, you can go out and stuff, but it's just more the fact, I think they're accepting the fact that someone's going to get it. Like, if you're double vax, it's like you're double vax. But um, there's no real boundaries about it. But it's, um, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty chill, to be honest. Yeah, that's good. And we're wondering as well, pre-season, how much of a strict diet do you have to keep to? Because we've got the cinnamon buns on the floor there. <laughs> like, would the, uh, <laughs> the physios and what the physios, the health people, would they say a bit of a no-no? I know, Jai was uh, saying previously that he's a big guy. He loves his chocolate. So I'm yeah. a bit surprised that they're <laughs> yeah. sitting there. I'm... Um, in the off season, I would say I'd have one of them, but now I'm in pre season. I need to sort of trim down a bit, get the skinnies down. So I'll, I'm staying away from the scrolls. They, they are smelling very nice. Are they scrolls? Uh, they're scrolls? Some cinnamon buns. buns. They're, buns. they're looking very nice. Same they're smelling thing. very nice. You can have, you're welcome to have nah, one throughout nah. the podcast if you'd like. Yeah. If you change your mind, maybe. Lockie, you too. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely get into one of those. And I'm sure Essendon fans will be thrilled to hear how seriously Jai is taking his, uh, his pre season. <laughs> but so you touched on it a little bit before you, you hit the tools. I think we might have spoken about this before our, our little faded attempt last time to do the podcast. Podcast, but tell us, how, how do you go on the tools? How do you go? You're a um, farmer's boy. You grew up on a farm. Yeah, from, I grew up on a farm back in Bendigo. Uh, I've been there for probably for like 15 years of my life. I moved there when I was pretty young. 
Um, I'm not too bad. You know, like my dad will say otherwise, but um, <laughs> I'm not too bad compared to anyone in like Melbourne or who hasn't grown up in a farm. Um, but yeah, it gives me a fair bit of slack about um, me being on the tools. And I'm not very good at it, but at least I'm trying. You know, if you're on the tools, trying your best. That's all that matters. Don't worry, mate. Your parents are always going to be your harshest critics. So exactly. don't don't listen to them. No, I don't, <laughs> mate. So we're talking about being on the farm and going to the big smoke in Sydney. Uh, in your draft year, but let's talk a bit about your draft year. Actually, I think you tell me it was like Tower's top five pick, right? W- were you Tower's? Uh, I'm not. Pick? I'm not too sure to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really read into that much stuff. Yeah. Well, I think from what we were talking about, I think he was. Yeah, I think you were. We'll, we'll claim it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> were you surprised that you went um, like so high? Um, yeah. After I had a pretty bad draft year, honestly. Like I, I did two hamstrings. Um, so I was pretty surprised that I was still that high. Uh, so it was good though, like feeling that people still rate you very highly with those, um, like with those injuries in the past, but it's, um, it was a long season. It was pretty, it was a pretty annoying season, but, um, to go pick, uh, 11, it was, yeah, dream come true. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I guess, did you sort of, did you have an idea that you'd be, uh, going up to the Sydney, to the, uh, to the opera house? Um, at the time, I was I thought I was going to Adelaide. Um, I knew I knew Giants were keen, but I thought that I was going to the Crows. I don't know what pick they had, but that's where I thought I, had, I sort of had my head going. But it didn't end out that way, did it? <laughs> so, what like what, what did the Crows tell you? Did they promise? you? Um, I just they said in the, all the meetings and all that we had, and they sort of said like, "Yeah, well, you've first priority for us and all that," but. Um, didn't pan out that way, but, um, yeah, I didn't mind the trip up to Sydney for the couple of years. No, nah, beautiful, beautiful part of the world. And, but That's obviously, nice. it, obviously it must've been, you know, tough, you know, I guess leaving family from home, like you said, you grew up on a farm in Bendigo, best farmer in the business. And then having, having to go up to Sydney, what, how was it being apart from your family, particularly, I guess, during COVID years where you couldn't travel back and forth? Uh, it wasn't too bad actually, cause I went to Geelong Grammar start of year 10, so that's about two hours from Bendigo. It's sort of moving away from home at 16, 15. It got me ready to move interstate. So interstate didn't really bother me, to be honest, because I already spent the last probably three years away from my parents. Um, so that was a good part of boarding school, like to get used to like Sydney. So I didn't really have any problem with it at all. Yeah, but debut in the snow? In the snow, yep. Right. What's it like debuting in the snow? <laughs> Had you seen uh, snow before? <laughs> oh, I've actually never been to the snow. So I have now. The first game was in the snow. Um, it was, yeah, it was, it was incredible. I, did, I wasn't actually picked for the game. I've, um, I remember sitting on my bed in Sydney um, and I got a phone call saying the night before you need to catch a plane down to Canberra to because um, I think it was Hopper did his hamstring or something. So I packed my bags, jumped down there and, yeah, it was what minus one in Canberra that night and it was something I'll never forget it was my first game in the snow both both first time things and we didn't get the win but it was a good experience to play my first game yeah so being like at that late inclusion like you said were you, was your family able to come or were you sort of like did you find out that you were playing about 50 minutes before oh no it was more like a 24 hour thing so my parents lucky enough drove up and uh, watched my game but yeah it was 20, about 24 hours it was the night before yeah, right. And not getting the win and uh did like did you get a consistent run of games that season or uh I reckon I've played like injury wise or uh just like, like in the how AFL. How much were you inside in the AFL, yeah. Um I didn't play first probably fifteen rounds. I played the f- two I played that game and then I played Bulldogs, I reckon, the week after. And then I didn't get a look in for the rest. Yeah, and that was the year the Giants made the grand final. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So what's it like watching that run? From um, it was it was it was good. Like it was a pretty. Um, obviously, you'd want to be out there performing in a good team like that, making the grand final. But I feel like all the boys that weren't playing were all pretty um, supportive of them, and it was pretty long. Like you know, you're not playing, but you're training, being the bunnies and the cones for the last five weeks. It gets pretty hard, but you know that um, you're just trying to help the team out. So it was it was good. It's well worth it. 
Yeah, no, nah, I definitely know about being a training cone. It's what I it's what I do best. <laughs> but yeah, so like, what is it that like though? So you're training. So obviously, so you're out of the side. I mean, do you go as hard as possible to try and get to get yourself back in, or are you worried? Oh crap, I don't want to then injure somebody because you don't. Well, you don't want to get in that yeah. way by injuring somebody at training. Like, it must be sort of an awkward balancing act. Yeah, it's a fine line because if you go too hard and you hurt someone, everyone looks at you going like, "What are you doing, mate?" And then the other way around, they go, "Oh." Like why aren't you why aren't you trying hard? Like why aren't you like trying to make us better? I'm like, mate, like what, what are you supposed to do? Like you meant to. It's um, it's pretty easy to balance though. Like you you know where to you know the like your yeah, max effort and like you know if you're gonna improve or not. But um, yeah, it's pretty chills. So GWS at that time finally making a grand final, but losing. But it was like towers the Ferrari and that kind of thing. Was there much talk about that within the? group like or pressure from Melbourne but maybe not so much pressure from Sydney but was there much talk about pressure inside the club about winning the final well draft about final? like um pressure like all these young guns you're getting handed all these draft picks and you've got like the best young players in the comp and yeah. in their prime much um I, I'm, I'm not too sure I don't think there was much pressure I think it was more the fact there was the pressure on being the first grand final um it wasn't really much of the top picks I might have saw I think I did see a few articles about getting handed draft picks and all that, but I don't think it really delved into the cl- club that much because inside a football club, none of that, none of those things really matter, to be honest. So they're just outsiders' opinions and articles. But, yeah, I, I know at the time now when we're looking at it, it was, um, yeah, they didn't, del- they didn't del- delve into it that much. Yeah, and I guess that build up because was half the Giants side injured that day because that's sort of like those, that was yeah. the reports out of it. Like they were pretty busted up after a pretty hard yeah. final series of yeah. four weeks in a row. Yeah, I remember um, who who they play Collingwood. Um, I know Phil Davis had a strained calf. Uh, I know like who else? DeBoer had like a something wrong with his knee. Um, someone else had something wrong with something. So we're going in pretty. Um, pretty underdone with a few of the players but um that's where it might unfolded but i feel like that if they took their time again they might have chose people who can actually run out of game but um it's in the past isn't it yeah you were stiff jai you were stiff, oh, stiff mate i was yeah. stiff yeah. <laughs> heard it here first but um, i guess go, going on for that we'll move on from the grand final so you've obviously it's been a pretty successful giant side and so heading into the pre-season i guess your goals for 2020 would have just been sort of securing that best uh, spot in the best 22 yep yep um yeah I've, well uh, we had a pretty good summer that year we started pretty early um i know it was pretty disappointing my first year i thought um and then going into my second year, we had a good season. I remember I missed out on the first round of 2020. Um, and then after that, COVID hit. So I remember coming back down to Bendigo, doing all my work down here. And then when we went back up to, what do we do? Um, like the COVID season, like the shorter games and all that. I remember I played probably nine that season, which was all right in like a 17-game season or something like that. Um, I had a couple of niggles here and there but other than that I was pretty happy with this season and yeah but like even even then the GWS midfield is just so stacked isn't it yeah yep. one of the most talked about and most highly rated midfields for well, I've seen in my lifetime at least and you're trying to crack into that how was that it's very tough um with the likes of Timmy Tirano Hopper we've got Tom Green Cal Ward Cogs they're um all we all play similar positions, if not the same positions, but um, it's all about learning different positions on the field, like playing half. I know I played probably majority half full. I probably play 80% half forward and then 20% midfield during that COVID year. But um, it's hard because everyone wants a bit of the pie. And then if you can't get in it, then you um, sort of swap out as well. So um, it's pretty tough, um, but you sort of grit through and try and do the best you can. I reckon, yeah, I think you've touched on a really good point because I feel like a lot of people, players drafted, you know, they they play all their under 18 footy as um, inside mids and then they're expected to go and play in, as a small forward, which not only have they probably never played before, easily the toughest position on the ground. Easily the toughest position. And they just, ex- and they just expect, and then they're wondering, like, oh, I've got this like top 10 pick and he's not dominating as a small forward. And it's like, well, it's pretty it's pretty hard. You're learning to play the toughest position at the highest level. Yeah, it's done have it doesn't happen often that someone drafts it inside mid, plays inside mid straight away. Um, that's where I sort of looked at it. I was like, 
like I'm drafted here. Why aren't I playing here? But then I thought like over the last year or so, I've thought about it. Like no one really does that like ever. Like there's a couple here and there, but playing them forward lines, like it's actually a very hard position to play. I know like I've slowly learned to play a forward position, but it's taken a lot of time to learn that. Two different clubs as well, like different roles, yeah. structures. It's um, it's a challenge, but it's something you got to do. Yeah, and that's the other thing, like because like you touched on with roles, like, I think forward line play is such like a role based position. Like people might go and check the stats, and they might see, oh yeah, this person only had twelve disposals. But it's like, well, that's all they were expected yeah, as a small yeah. forward. You probably only had about twelve opportunities yeah. to get near the footy. So yeah, it usually is tough. kick it over your head as well, and from <laughs> it, so you you lose both situations. I think Darcy Parrish in his first season, that was when all the bombs players were suspended. He was probably does he does he speak about that much like being like a, one of the key midfielders for Essendon in his first yeah he was good his first year wasn't he was he good like when, was that when the drug saga was on yeah, yeah 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 so like they had all the like Watson and Stanton and all the best midfielders were out yeah and he was drafted and he had to play like an inside mid yeah basically. week after week week after week yeah. <laughs> does he talk about that to you at all I remember we spoke we did like a thing at the club where we spoke about um like he's like like his five, six years at the club, like how he progressed as a player. And I'm pretty sure he did say that he played every game, every single game, but he didn't really touch on it like in depth. Yeah. But yeah, he said that he played majority of the games because it's the saga situation. Yeah. Yeah. So you're like kind of getting shunted around to small forward and stuff when you're at the Giants. And like you, you add more strings to your bow, you're forced to add more strings to your bow. Uh, what strings do you reckon have added, been added to your bone and how have you become a better player if you have by playing small forward and that kind of yeah, role? Just probably more like my running positioning and all that. Like with a midfielder, you sort of just track the ball. Like I feel like that as an inside midfielder, you don't have your head on a swivel. Like you track the ball. You don't really think of anything else except for getting the ball. But in the forward position, I've learned like different running patterns. I've learned different agility moves like jumping moves, body positioning, even like if you're in the forward line and someone kicks it, it's sort of like the same as when it's a throw up, like you need to use your body work to get the full of the ball. Um, that's where it's come in useful, but I've, um, hopefully this year I'll be playing a bit more mid and then a bit more forward as well. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to see if I've improved in that game. Yeah, yeah. And so... So, as you said, you played a bit of forward. So, some people wouldn't have had the opportunity to see Jai Caldwell, the inside mid. Could you tell us a little bit about what that player is, what what are his strengths, and what is it, and what he is doing in that role as the inside mid? Yeah. Um, ideally, I am pretty good with my hands. I feel like that my handballing and contested ball is pre- pretty good. Like that's probably my strength. Um, I'm not an overly big person. Um, I can still put a bit of size on, but. Uh, I also like to run out of contest, tackle hard, um, and just the typical inside midfielder craft, I suppose. Uh, you say you're not an overly big person. I think your legs are about the size of a whole uh, thing, mate. That, I, I don't have big legs. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, uh, should we talk about the leaving GWS and we'll kind of move on to that? Um, yeah, leaving GWS, requesting that trade to the Bombers, I think, back in uh, 20, uh, 2020. Yep. Um, so tell, tell us your thought process during the season before like all the paperwork gets lodged and all that kind of thing. So like, what ultimately made you want to come back to Victoria from GWS? Yep. Um, it was, uh, it was pretty, it was pretty hard because everyone was saying that, um, I was homesick and all that, but like I wasn't homesick at all. Um, that's just what people say. They get drafted at GWS and want to leave. They say that you get homesick and you miss your family, but that wasn't the case at all. I've, uh, I thought that. My best footy wasn't at GWS. I thought that it was at a Melbourne club and that being Essendon. I thought that it wasn't no, nothing against Giants. Like I loved the club th- for the last two years when I was there, but I thought that for myself and my future, the best club would have been Essendon. Um, and I remember speaking to Dioro and Truck and all that, and they were super keen to get me down there at the hangar. And um, yeah, I sort of had a, I talked to a few clubs, but nothing like... Uh, Essendon have and I felt like that was the best thing I could have done and yeah when we lodged the paperwork and it was done it was a pretty stressful time because it was the last minute of the sure. trade period so uh, that was that wasn't good but once it was finalised it was, I was a happy man yeah what to, what to unpack there but I think yeah you raised another really good point I think it's just for the journalists it's so easy they say alright this, play, this player's gone from Victoria 
or he's out of contract or he wants to come home because he's home, because he's homesick. But it's like how yeah, you touched on, like you, you've lived out of home since you're like 15, yeah. 16. So it wasn't wasn't the uh, problem yeah. at all. But then and they say don't draft him in the first place. And it's like, well, you, you got no idea, mate. Like, yeah. So a uh, couple of questions I want to ask. First one, dra- being drafted in like that last minute. So you you traded. The tra- yeah, well, yeah, drafted, traded. Um, getting traded in the last minute. Are you feeling nervous? Oh, I was absolutely shitting myself. <laughs> I was, look, I saw, the last thing I wanted to do was request a trade and then not getting done. Like, I thought that'd be the most awkward thing oh. ever. But um, no, I, I knew that if I didn't get done, I was going to the, I don't know what it's called. It's like the post. Pre-season, pre-season yeah, draft. Yeah, pre-season draft. Or so something. you were out of contract? So I was out of contract. Right, yeah. okay. Yeah, so I knew that it wasn't the end of the world, but it's just annoying because I couldn't have come to the club until oh, it was finalised. Yeah. Um, but it was, yeah, it was a very stressful time, yeah. to say the least. Another one. I think lots of the papers were saying St Kilda was a big suitor. Yep. Uh, I'm guessing you talked to him. Yep. Why did you go for Essendon over the Saints? It, like, was it purely because Essendon had so many good things or did St Kilda have some things not quite good? I was going to say, also, because you were a St Kilda fan growing yep. up, weren't yep. you? Yeah. Yep. It's, um, it's, a, it's a strange run because I, I know that at the time that there was a lot of rumours going about it the culture at the club at Essen with um, who are the players who left, like Saad, um, Danaher, Danaher, Fantasia, even. all them boys. And I, I know there was a few people who like, raised a few eyebrows saying like, why well, I would request to go there when all these people were leaving. And um, back to the St Kilda point, like I just thought that it was a good club like, because I remember they went well the year before St Kilda, so I did have the thought of going like going to a good club, like there on the rise and whatnot. But at the end of the day, I was honestly tr- uh, truck and Adrian. Like I just thought that that I could see myself more in Essen colours. I could see myself playing a good a good role and make an impact at Essen. But um, but St yeah. Kilda didn't make you feel that. No, they did. Like they were they were they were like that. But I could see my like I could. I had a vision, not a vision, but I could see myself <laughs> at Essen. Like, it, was, it was weird. It was, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, definitely. I can definitely see the. They obviously spoke to you about having that inside mid role. That was sort of like. Your yeah, they lube it up. All suppose. the clubs lube it up. They, <laughs> they, tell, they tell you the world. Trust me. I think most uh, Essen fans have got visions to play for Essen, but <laughs> this guy's much more likely. I yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And I guess, and so I think you've touched on it a little bit um, before, but you've had your journeys, obviously, unfortunately, being littered through injuries. Like, how have you sort of like gone through that? I guess maintaining like mental toughness throughout, obviously, adversity. Like, I think you did a hamstring after yep. round three um, this year, or. Uh, you obviously GWS. I think you did a groin. Was it a missed a couple yep. missed a couple of weeks? And obviously your draft year. So so obviously it's come at the worst possible times. Like how have you sort of gone through and dealt with that? Yeah, it's it's very tough. Like I've I know it's made me a better person. Um, not just like generally, but like mentally when these things happen, I know how to deal with them because I've dealt with them in the past. But I just know in a couple of years I'm going to be laughing. Like I have the confidence that. If I get my body right, which I will, I'll be a very important player for Essen. I feel that's where I sort of try and strive to. Like I've, and like if I, when I'm on the park, I try and do like I feel like I'm a very impactful player when I'm there. Um, that sort of gets me through it, through it. Um, and I just have them future thoughts. It um makes it a lot easier. But yeah, the first probably couple injuries I've had was. Yeah, very stressful. I remember in the um, my draft year, doing them, I thought I'd slide and whatnot. Um, and I think I did, but it didn't really matter to me, to be honest. But um, yeah, I know I know how to deal with them now. It's, it's It takes a toll on you, but you get through it. So what sort of stuff are you doing with your body to sort of make sure? Because obviously, I guess you've done a few hamstrings. I, I, yep. I'm, really int- I'm really interested as like a fan of the sport. What does an AFL player do to get their body ready for, I guess, the preseason and the yep. AFL season? Well, you can never like, you can never know when you're going to get injured. Like you, you can do all the prep and all the stuff, but you just never know. Like f- stuff happens. But I, most of the time I do Pilates. Um what else do I do? I do a lot of like glute, glute activation, um, core work, all that type of stuff. But yeah, not like at the moment, I don't really do much hamstring stuff because it's not actually like the hamstring itself. It's more just like the positioning of your body and all that. Like it's your body function. Like it's not, that's usually with an injury. Like it's not actually the point of where the injury is. It's more like your body 
um, what's it, your body shape sort of. So. Yeah, like the, the connections and stuff, yeah, I guess. And bizarre. The, I'm not yeah. a physio, but <laughs> <laughs> feel like I'm studying sports science here. Yeah. Are you feeling good now? Yeah, cherry. Okay. Very good. Love to hear that. Very cherry, I haven't heard that one cherry. before. Cherry ripe? Cherry ripe. Cherry ripe. <laughs> Harry Perrimer, I think, did that as well. <laughs> yeah. It's a giant thing. He would have. Yeah. Um, now, uh, Phil, Phil Davis, I, the lucky you found this one as well, Matt. You were on fire with the research for this. Phil Davis said, uh, you, you're going to have to tell me when he said it. If I was going to put a 10-year contract in front of anyone, it, I'd put it in front of Jai Caldwell. I just love Jai. Uh, well, did you know he said that? And uh, uh, Yeah, I was pretty really chuffed with him, actually. <laughs> and I, was, I, remember I, came, I think I played, it was after um, my first game to uh, the Giants. I remember I had played pretty well, kicked a couple of snags and... Um, I oh know. I think I was just doing everything right according to him. So uh, I had to thank him for that one. Oh, fingers crossed he becomes a list manager one day because your your career yeah. set. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, he's a list manager down the track. Yeah. <laughs> ten year, I'll, I'll take you up on that, mate. When Jai's thirty, t- accepts a ten year deal yeah. from Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to ask you, you did boxing back back in your uh, yep. what when, teenager around then? Yeah, yeah. like you. Te- oh, when I, when was it? You seventy, year ten, I think. Yeah, right, and you're pretty good. Yeah. What well, all right. Yeah, right. right. So, like, when I right, what, what kind of level were you? Uh, I, I won the Vic State Boxing. Won the Vic uh, State Boxing? Yeah. Jeez. It was, it was a long time ago, though. It was, like, <laughs> 60 kilos. Does, does that help out with your footy? Oh, massively. How like, so? I reckon that's helped out with just, like, your contested ball, like, you, even just with my handballing, like, reactions to fire a handball out, um, your positioning, your footwork, all ties in together. That's why most clubs probably do boxing. Hmm. So... You, I've you, got a follow up to that. So everybody says Scott Pendlebury basketball background. Should they, when you get the footy, saying Jai Caldwell boxing background? I know a few times when I've played, my mum said they have a boxing call. So oh. yeah, that's had a few times, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so w- did you give it up just to like pursue footy instead? Or uh, I would have kept doing it. I just went to this boarding school. So yeah. I couldn't I'd do it like when I was there. There was no one to really train me or anything. Yeah. And I heard... There was something going on with like your feet. You had some sore feet or something when you were boxing. Is that <laughs> no? Right? I didn't have sore feet. No. <laughs> sore feet. Okay. Well, oh, no, we cut that one out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where what, you got uh, that from. <laughs> well, uh, there was some article saying <laughs> sore feet. Sore feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of not sore feet. Here. No. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. <laughs> You've never had sore feet. Your feet feel good now. No, I feel good now, mate. Comfortable. Good. Comfortable. No, I think yeah, you got, got good that good. mixed up when he said um one of the Essendon players has sore feet for the time trial. I think you got it mixed up there. No. Um. There was some article about it. It's very All right, anyway, mo- moving on. So we'll, cu- we'll cut that out, even though it was a good laugh. So 2021, <laughs> you're, you've arrived at the Dons. Your feet are fine. <laughs> yeah, um, feet are fine. So t- tell us a little bit your expectations sort of pre-season at, the, at a new club. My first year at the yeah, Bombers. At, at the, um, very, I was very nervous, actually. Very intimidated by coming to a new club, basically starting again. It's a very daunting experience, like, because it's hard because I was there. There's only, like, my person, my age at the club. Like, when I was at the Giants, I had all the boys I was drafted with, so it was a lot easier. It wasn't just me. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty it was pretty tough coming in, starting fresh all over again. But uh, it was a, I had a pretty good preseason. I thought it was me, that was my first full preseason I've done. Um, I was fit, cherry. Everything was going well. I... Um, we played a few scratch matches, played against Carlton, Geelong and all that and played pretty well. I thought I was in the in for a good season, but yep, didn't turn out that way. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the team expecting pre season? We spoke to Andy McGrath pre season and he was he was quite confident, quite excited. Yeah, he was up and about he's saying, Yeah, Ben Rudden is gonna turn the place around, we'll be we'll yeah. be around the mark. Last year? Like last like, yeah, 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 yeah. Twenty twenty one and I was a bit like I was just so, shaking my head. But mate, you guys were you awesome. Feeling, yeah. yeah, it was um it's pretty inspiring actually. Like the way trucks come in and sort of ch- turn that around. Obviously there's got different personnel in personnel and all that. But um yeah, it's just it's just the belief I feel like and the culture of the club at the moment. It's um yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, I've got I've got a little stat stat here which I'm remembering off the top of my head. So Jai's played 14 AFL games. Yeah. How many of them wins? Oh, yeah. Not I, many, I, know I think. No. Mate, how unlucky have you been? You've how many have one, two or one? I think like three. Yeah. Three and it was all in a row. Yeah, yeah I think Draw as well if you played in a draw. Or is that and is that another thing from the feet article? Uh, <laughs> I'm playing a draw. No, I think I'm playing a draw. Nah. But yeah, you've been unlucky. Like, I had a stinker. I remember my first 
probably six games I've lost. <laughs> and then I'll probably, yeah, won three, I think, and then back down. Yeah, what was that first win like after six losses? You must have been, it must have been a sense of relief. Yeah, I thought, I, I remember I interview <laughs> after the, my first win and I thought I was a bit of a bad luck charm, but got one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and that Hawthorne game for SM. That was pretty embarrassing. Let's be honest. That was yeah shocking. Yeah, you playing those first two? Yeah. We want to talk about your performance. How do you reckon you went in those first? Well, you got injured halfway through the second. Yeah, game. yeah. First game. First game was all right. I played all right. Yeah. Uh, um, well. Second game did my hamstring, um, but that was a tough day at the office. That was yeah. That was no it's one. No one played Adelaide. that day. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought my first game was all right. But you, you talked about that first game being embarrassing. I, I don't want to talk about it too much because I'm a Bombers fan. Yeah. God, it hurts me a bit. But uh, what, what did Truck say to you? Um, like half-time and then full-time. Must I imagine it's a bit of a contrast. Yeah, massive contrast. Um, it was, we are doing really well at half-time and then at the end of the game, we were just disappointed. Um, mm. Wasn't, Truck's not much of a sprayer or okay. like... Yeah, he doesn't really yell at you that much, which is good. It's more just understanding what we did wrong and what we can do better next time. We sort of panicked. It's the first game we played really together and we sort of just panicked and thought that we need to score as well, but it wasn't the case at all. We just had to keep playing our brand of footy, but we didn't do that and we um, we, ad- we addressed that and we even played better. That happened down the track a bit more and we knew that that game would have helped us f- for later on down the track, um, which it did, thank God. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And uh, well, so you, like Harper said, so you've injured your hamstring um, during your second game. And look, we won't go too hard on the journos here, but you know, we love, we've, we've said it before, they said you were homesick and then they also said you were done for the season. I mean, but tell they us. They said you had dodgy feet as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tell, tell us yeah. about that, though, that recovery from like the hamstring. And like, did you ever think that your season was over? Um, no, I was more. Annoyed that I thought I was going to miss Anzac Day, and I really want to play Anzac oh. Day, and then I did miss Anzac Day, obviously. But <laughs> I was about two weeks away from playing, and I actually redone my hamstring. Do you know that? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, re- yeah. I redid it, um, which was I probably should have got surgery at the start, to be honest, because I did tear it pretty bad at the start. Um, it's just in a bad location, um, which was yeah pretty annoying when I did it the second time because I was about two weeks away from playing. And that puts me back even further to do my rehab to get back. And um, that was hard. Like, I remember that was pretty tough because um, I was thinking like, oh, yeah, I'm playing next week. And then this happens. But getting back at the end of the season, I could have easily folded the towel in and said, no, nah, I'm just going to rest, keep my body safe and not um, not play the last few games because I didn't really think that um, we got to make finals, to be honest. But... We did, which is good. <laughs> yeah. um, and then playing that first final, um, getting selected. I know I played the, probably two games before that, tested the hammy out and everything was fine. And then playing the first final, um, yeah, it was great. It was my first final I've played in and it was a loss, but it was good to get out there. <laughs> yeah, you've gone through a long period of time there. Just yeah, I, I've covered the whole thing, haven't yeah. I? <laughs> Sorry, right, boys. Nothing to talk about. That, yeah, thanks for coming. Sorry. We'll see you next week. Um, <laughs> no, but um, go back go back to round two. So yeah. you're sitting on the bench with your dodgy hammy, maybe some dodgy feet as well. Hey, we said yeah. hamstrings aren't dodgy. We've been through this. Oh, yeah. We have. Okay. Strong, have you been listening? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you're sitting on the bench and I think Sam Draper and Dylan Shield sitting on the bench with their both injured. Bombers are getting hammered in that game against Port. It was up, like over by half time, I think. Yeah. And the media Bring up good memories. Yeah, the the media uh, kind of narrative with that was that the bombs are just gone this year. Maybe wooden spoon, who knows? So, what what are your thoughts in your mind at that point? Like you're injured, it's not looking very bright, is it? No, it wasn't. Um, it was it was weird. I remember like it, it sort of was like it's hard to. It's, this is probably bad to say, but it's sort of good that other people were injured as well so it doesn't make you feel as bad like it's <laughs> yeah. just not it's not just you like yeah. there's two other people going through probably like long-term injuries with yourself so um it was obviously very disappointing that it happened but having other people do, that you can do rehab with was probably a positive so i again i asked this for the giants but what was the atmosphere in the house like with the bombers at this point because out of house, it wasn't too. Wasn't too um, inside, it was pretty fine to be honest. Um, 
when someone goes down and someone replaces. Uh, so if whoever's next in line plays, you got to perform, do your role. It's um, so on and so on. So it's it was obviously disappointing that three of us got injured. Um, but next three come in line, and I think we won the next week by a lot. So just yeah. shows. Yeah, I think well, the hallmark of a good club is that when you come in on Monday, you can't tell if they've won or they've lost. You can't tell if their yeah. star players have gone down. And it definitely seems like, obviously, pretty good down there. Move on, move on pretty quickly. And yep. But like you said it before, are you a bit surprised that um, – that Bombers made finals at the end, or a little bit, but um, like, were you surprised when you like came in, or did, were you pretty confident that you were making that first week of finals in the team? Uh, it was a bit of a hit and miss, to be honest. I've um, I know I play. I was pretty unfit. Like I've played a half of footy and then one scratch match after a whole year of not playing footy. So I was pretty underdone from a fitness uh, point of view. But my hamstring was fine. Um. It shows shows where I'm at in my footy. Like I feel like the truck selecting me shows that he's got a lot of trust in me to play that role in the Definitely. team um, yeah. and shows that he wants me to play that position in the future. So him selecting me to play that final was huge. I was wrapped with that. Um, I started off all right, but I absolutely conked out. So <laughs> yeah. I just know next time. Just, yeah. eight, I think you had like eight touches in the first quarter or yeah, something. Yeah, I started off well, but oh, then yeah. after that did not see it. So. <laughs> During the season when you're watching on the sidelines, uh, what, what was the high point for the team, uh, do you reckon, like on field? Um, was a particular one? When Jai came back. Uh. Came back. <laughs> <laughs> when was it? I think that um, I, I wasn't there, but I think the West Coast game oh, yeah. when they were in Perth, when they won that, I think that was a bit of like a win over there is pretty big, like winning West Coast in Perth is a pretty big game. Yeah. Um, I think that I wasn't there, but I heard. I think that was a bit of a tipping point. Yeah. Did, um. So, what, what about for you personally throughout the season? Like excluding coming back from that final, but watching from the sidelines, was there a moment where you were like, "Geez, we like we could be on here, maybe make finals." Was that West Coast? Game? Um, I think there wasn't because we we're probably floating around the ten for most of the year. I think. Yeah. Um, I think it was that Bulldogs game, like the um. Oh, what do you call it? The home and away season. A yeah. couple of rounds before finals, wasn't it? Yeah, a couple of rounds before yeah, finals. Because yeah. honestly, I didn't think that. I think I think we had to win every game or something. Yeah. Um, and we're playing Bulldogs, and I wasn't overly confident if I'm going to be honest. But we got the win there, and then after that, I was like, yeah, we've everything's got to. I think everything had to fall into place with other teams as well. Mm. And I heard you were doing full training six weeks before the Dogs final. Is that true? Um, I probably wasn't doing full training. I was training for probably like. Three weeks, I reckon. Two weeks. Yeah, right. Okay. So. Oh, no. I was probably doing for like four, but then I played a few games. So, you, when did you know you were in? Was it just the same time as everyone else or did you get... Yeah, the just like the... Yeah, out. Uh, <laughs> a couple of days before. Like <laughs> yeah. the... When, they, when Chuck goes around, does the rounds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, happy days. Happy days. And so, first final, I think we touched on it a couple of minutes ago, but what was it like playing your first final? Pretty ferocious contest against the eventual grand finalist. Yeah, it's... um, It was a huge game. Um, It was... Cold down there as well. It was raining. Um, but playing against a pretty good team, but also a midfield with Bont, Trelaw, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it was, yeah, pretty tough fight. Um, in that game, I played majority forward slash mid as well, just like playing a different role as well. But it was tough. We, I know we, st- I think we started all right as well, didn't we? Or some, or, yeah. But then I think it was after half time we melted. But yeah. Um, there's always next year, like, if we have a good summer, we know we know what we need to work on. Like, I know that it was raining and all that, but um, it was, yeah, just good to be out there, to be honest. Uh, it's been a fair few finals losses for the Bombers, but that yeah. it was, like, one of the more positive seasons. Yeah, for sure. Easily, yep. um, that I can remember. But was there talk of finals drought in the club? Like, because um, obviously I haven't won a final since 04. Yeah. Any talk of that at all? Um, not at all, I don't think. Okay. It's, um... A lot of outside word never gets into a club, really. Yeah. Like, you don't really, it's sort of just, you just don't bring it up, I don't think. It's yeah. just, okay. like, everyone sort of knows it, you just don't say it. Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> but, yeah, like, so, because all, all AFL players say they don't read the paper, so just say somebody walks in with a Herald Sun, are they like, nah, chuck it out, you're not allowed in here <laughs> oh, with the newspaper. Oh, I've never seen a newspaper at the club, so you're probably right. <laughs> There's probably a rule, so, I don't know. How do you reckon you went against the dogs? Uh, you said you started pretty well. Do you reckon... Like I thought you played pretty well. Do you, 
overall? Oh, no, it was pretty average to be honest. Like after probably half time, I was pretty average. Did um, you feel rusty? Oh, a little bit rusty. I was, probably wasn't up to the speed. Um, the, my reaction time and all that. The, the AFL was a lot different to playing scratch matches against 15 people. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, I started off all right. Like I've, I, I sort of probably put a bit on myself as well, expecta- expectation wise. Like I can't go out there first game and have 25, 30 licks of the footy. But, yeah, you can certainly work towards it. Yeah, no, awesome. And I think disappointing result, but obviously, like you said, took a lot of confidence that Truck selected you for that final. And I guess now heading into 2022, mate, how, how are you looking into this off-season and uh, what are your goals? My goals for the season coming yeah. or pre-season? Yeah, for the season coming. Um, it's probably just being being able to play 22 games of footy or plus finals and grand final. Um but other than that, that's probably, that's my main one. Like I know it's, last year was very disappointing with injuries and all that. But being a durable player is something there to be nowadays. Otherwise, you don't get very far. And I haven't been durable thus far. But next year will be the year. But also in my footy, it's um, also like my kicking, field kicking can get a lot better, I reckon. Um, and also just like my D two, D three type of um. Defense, it's it's D two D three. Yeah, it's a just it's taking out like receivers and all that. Like, yeah, okay, right. Yeah, it's fo- yeah, bit of terminology. So. <laughs> yeah, bit of terminology. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So mo- it's very exciting coming into this twenty twenty two season. Is there any kind of thing or player that we should be particularly excited about, other than yourself, of course? Um, players, there's a lot of players have come back in elite nick. Um, everyone. Uh, who who should I say? Zerk Thatcher's dropped a bit of weight. Um, who else? There? Pidge is coming early. Uh, Hammy, your boy Ham. Yeah, my boy. Um, who else? Coxie's put on weight. Everyone's whatever they set their goals to, they've accomplished it. So that's um been the main thing. But everyone's looking cherry at the moment. It, what's the um atmosphere like compared to like this time last season? Uh, in the preseason wise, like yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, I know it's a lot better because last year I was more, I was fresh, I was fresh face, um, didn't really know anyone, um, so I'm a lot more comfortable this year, and I'm attack. We're attacking preseason pretty hard at the moment. Truck treating it like differently at all, or have you seen him kind of grow as a coach? Is that you? Uh, yeah, he's he's slowly developing. Um, obviously, last year was my first year, so I didn't really know what he was like before that, mm. but. Yeah, uh, you just got to build a connection with coaches, like, and that takes time. And he is, like, he knows what he's doing, but it's just hard to sort of talk, like, sort of outside the the way he like speaks. You know what I mean? It's probably hard to say. Like, it's he is more of a um, what's I don't know the word. Don't worry. Um, I reckon I'm ready to move on to the life philosophy harps. Go for it. So yeah, so we ask every uh, every guest, Jai. So uh, do you have a life philosophy? Any few little words that you sort of live your life by? I create my own reality. Ooh. Explain. That's an interesting one. Uh, I like that. I like that. I've got a sticker on my mirror at home. Um, it's basically, I create my own reality. You you make your own life. Like you get out of what you need to do. What Where'd you, you want to achieve? Um, I just saw it like once, and then I got a sticker of it. So <laughs> I just yeah, put it on my window, every, uh, not my window. What do you call it? A mirror. Um, get up. I create my own reality. There you go. Beautiful nice. inspirational words. I always start the day. Yeah. Is that all right? You like that one? Yeah, I like, I like that, that one. one. That's a good one. I have to get that sticker as well. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sort us out with your sticker guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> ready to get into the quiz, I reckon. Mate. Okay. Only reason Jai's here. Here we go. Should I hit the music? What are we doing now? Should I hit the music, Lockie? Yep, I reckon. Here we go. We love that music. It's quiz time. Jai, have you heard of the Where Do We Begin quiz before? I haven't, no. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Not many people have. So, (laughs) what I've got for you boys, uh, I've got five questions that all have some very vague, very loose connection to you and your your life and your career. Not like what numbers does Jai call while wear, but some, it's, it's a bit wacky. I'm going to pit you, Jai, against you, Lockie. Five questions. Your name is your buzzer. Yeah, that's it, really. Ready to Correct. get into it? And then what, so you ask a question and we answer it. Yeah. yeah. So it's a quiz. And, oh, okay. And then you go, 
Oh, so if you, if I know it, I say Jaya. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, then, the answer. and then I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the answer. answer. Yeah. Okay. Too easy. You probably already know these, don't you? No. <laughs> oh, don't know. <laughs> when I answer in one second, you'll realise I do know all yeah. the answers. <laughs> okay, this, this is a bit of a history one. Question one. Uh, English plumber and businessman Thomas Crapper, uh, some say some people say he was born the 28th of September, 1836, same birthday as you. Yep. Yeah. History is a bit... Not it's not certain when he was born, but some people say twenty eighth of September, eighteen thirty six. What is Thomas Crapper known for? Quite aptly, uh, as a plumber, you said it. You said it yourself. What what is, what is what's he's famous for? Well, you should know this guy's a plumber. Nah. Your dad's a plumber. I'm sure he talks <laughs> about him. He's all probably the time. if he's listening, he'll be very disappointed. Probably, <laughs> but I've got no idea. It's, it's quite it's quite apt. Uh, to- invented toilet paper. You're plumber quite... is it actually a plumber. Invented the toilet. <laughs> oh. It's incorrect, I'm afraid. John? Um, I'm going to say he... Yeah, you're close, Lockie. Is it an invention question. or a business? Like It's kind of, yeah, like an invention, I'd say. Yeah, an invention. Plumber. I'm going to say a football. A football? He invented the football? Yep. That's incorrect as well. Mm. <laughs> He's in England. Or... Oh, true. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> invented the toilet. <laughs> You know more. I don't often dish out half points, but I'll dish out a half point here. There's That's a half, not a half point. For point. You. He manufactured one of the first widely successful lines of flush toilets and patented the floating ball cock. Oh, that's got to be a full point. You can't. Yeah, you that's go, a full point. You, go, you can't expect yeah. my first fully yeah. flushing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I'll be honest. I wrote this quiz about two months ago. I'm a bit rusty with all the answers. Okay, the I'll questions. tell you what. So I will give you the full point. I'll give you another two. I, I wouldn't want you marking my essays, giving me half yeah, marks. Yeah. I would yeah, have that's failed, failed BCE. <laughs> okay. Should we move to question two? This is, uh, this is the closest to the pin. Look, mate, I thought you had sore feet before, so I based this question off feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I don't I said, about the sore feet. By the way, feet, I, I saw yeah. him. He was searching up this article to prove that there was an article no, saying yeah, there's sore trying, feet. Yeah, I was trying to find it. I did. Send me the article. I want to read yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's definitely somewhere because I remember reading it. No, nah, you had sore strange. feet. You didn't know about yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't know about that. No one else knew about it. It was about you being like a young boxer with injured sore feet. feet. It was very, very strange. Um, yeah. Anyway. Good, good read. Uh, so... Uh, famous movie with feet in the title, Happy Feet. So, closest to the pin, in which year did Happy Feet come out? Rocky, 2006, with my man Elijah Wood, the main voice. Well, Jai, it's closest well, to the pin. I'd let you have a go, but is that it's got to bang on. Oh, I haven't seen Happy Feet either. Oh. But I was going to say 2008. That still would have been wrong, but well done. Well, you haven't seen what? Happy Feet. I haven't seen I've, I know That's the cover, it. like it's Penguin movie, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, but I've never seen it. Wow. Didn't get Happy Feet and Bendigo. Nah, didn't make the way down there. <laughs> <laughs> Question three. Your, your initials, of course, JC. Yeah. Yep. Probably up there with the most famous JCs, but maybe one slightly above you. Jesus Christ, pretty, pretty famous dude. <laughs> uh, so, what, according to, it's like, the, uh, whatever you want to call it, religion, what religion did Jesus Christ follow? Lucky. Lucky. He, uh, he was <laughs> Jewish. He was Jewish, yeah, correct. Are hey, you going to leave some for me or what? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a re- religious type either, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Didn't you do religion at school? Nah. Nah. Oh, we nah. did for like um, a year, I think. But I oh, I see. I did from year seven. So from yeah. year, to year 12? Nah, to like year 10. Oh, okay. Year 10. Three years, yeah, fair enough. Three years, yeah. There you go. I think you get a well, point here. I wouldn't have known that. Well done. Um, move to question four. Yeah, it's lucky. Are you, you're three nil up, aren't you? Jesus. Must want to do a nudie soon. <laughs> <laughs> Four, uh, fourth question, sorry. Um, so, uh, you debuted on the 9th of August 2019. I've done my research there. I hope that's right. Uh, I'd like their bloody sore feet. I can't get over that. Sore feet, Jesus. Um, so, there, there was a song that was on top of the charts, the Australian charts, for 24 weeks. Uh, including on the 9th of August, 2019. What was that song? Joe would be all over this. He'd, this would probably be his number one listen track. I'm it was the number one song. Number one song on August 9, 2019. It was top of the charts for 24 weeks. Oh, that'd be so, something like uh, Ed or something, wouldn't it? No, nah, hang, hang on, hang on. Song? I know the song. Um, oh, In, I think it came into 2020 as well was on top of the charts then. What's it? It was some people. You know it, don't you? I don't. I've got no idea. What was popular? I'd be. Is it I, I Am Giant song? 
Now it's like, I am giant. No, that one? Uh, yeah, no. That's oh. incorrect. You know the song I'm talking about, though. Yeah, 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 I feel yeah, like, because I used to play it like every game, so I thought like, I am that was giant. number one. Am yeah. I missing some of these? No, I remember they used to play that. Yeah, you know the song? Like, yeah, you know that yeah, song? Yeah. Giant. Dun, dun, yeah. Dun, dun. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've got, I've got That's no idea. idea. What was popular in Twitter? Well, okay, I'll give you a clue. Buy, buy an Aussie. Aussie woman. I'm still clueless. Young Aussie woman. She, I think she performs at the grand final, actually, that year. Mate, I've actually got no idea. <laughs> Did you go to that grand final, by the way? The Which grand final? GWS Richmond. Well, who performed? Oh, so it was 2019. Yeah, yeah. 2019. Oh, I was thinking of last year. No, yeah. 2019. It, it was top of the charts at the start of 2020 as well. Ali, is, I don't even know who, who's an Australian Ali, singer. Ali Goulding performed at the 2019, but then who else? Yeah, Jessica. I was, oh, I know. What, wait, no, not Tones and I. What's the song? Dance Monkey. Was that 2019? Absolutely correct. That's a ranked song. I wouldn't think that was number one either. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that song. Oh, not many people are. I, was, no. I didn't, didn't realise yeah. that was 2019. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah, you, you, would been front, you would have been front stage of the mosh at the grand final. No, I wasn't, Don't mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, no. you were. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, did, oh, I you, get a point. did you say you went to that grand final? Or? Yep. Yeah, right, you did. Okay. Uh, <laughs> move to question four. Oh, she did play, I think, at that grand final. Yeah, yeah, she did. Yeah, she did, yeah. Um, don't worry, I went to and I didn't remember. Huh? I went to, I didn't remember. <laughs> yeah. Move to question five. Jai, you're four nil down. It's yeah, not I know. Good. Sorry. <laughs> but question five is a who am I question. So I'm, I've got a series of clues. I'm going to start with a five point clue, go all the way down to a one point clue. Uh, of course, leading to who I am. Uh, so yeah, once you buzz in and get it wrong, can't buzz in again till the other person gets it wrong and. Yeah, you, you kind of get the gist. Yeah, get, get the gist. Get well, last saying. week I did, we did it with Wes Agar, and he got it on the four on point the four pointer just from where yeah. the bloke was born. He Who, who's this? Wes Agar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, he knew it was Darren Lehman because he knew that they shared the same birthday. Yeah, right. Crazy. So who did you do, Dad Lehman? No, Darren Lehman. Wes Agar. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Who, was, who, was the, who was the bloke? Darren Lehman was the Darren answer. Lehman. The coach, ex coach. Yeah. 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 I reckon Darren Lehman would not. Nah, he'd know who Wes is. He'd know Wes's birthday. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. And yeah, we were talking about 20th of September. Uh, you were born on 20th of September, as was this person. Uh, oh, I've got a little Who Am I music, actually. I might play this. Uh, an Australian sports person. I was born on the 28th of September, 1992. You need to get it here to win it outright, Jai. Or you can go to the four points. We can do a tiebreaker, if you'd like. Uh, I'm a sports person. Yeah, so sports person, born on the 28th of September, uh, 1992, Aussie sports person. Do you want to go here or do you want me to go to the four point clue? Um, go to the four point, I reckon. Just even it up. Yeah, yeah, even it up. Okay, even it up. Then we'll go to a tiebreaker if you get it here. Uh, I played junior football with Altham in the Diamond Valley Football League before going on to make my AFL debut in a loss to Melbourne at the MCG in round 23, 2011. Who was that? W- the Waston. Waston? What did you say? In, uh, I played junior football with Altham in the Diamond Valley Football League before going on to make my AFL debut in a loss to Melbourne oh, lost at the to Melbourne. MCG in round 23, 2011. To be fair, it's hard to concentrate with this music yeah, in the music, uh, <laughs> music still playing. Yeah, there we go. It's <laughs> I'm going to say... Okay, so Melbourne was... I'll give you a clue. Melbourne I lost, to, I lost to Melbourne. Melbourne was pretty crap in 2011. Who would have lost to Melbourne? 2011. I honestly... Oh, it would have to have been a Gold Coast. They weren't there then. 2011. You tell me. Yeah, yeah. They came into the week. <laughs> Giants were 2012. Gold Coast, 2011. I want to say Dan Gorringe. Dan Actually, Gorringe. that is... Oh, he, no. he wouldn't have played into the first year, I reckon. I reckon he, he'd be, what, 20? He'd be, oh, be eight. No, I reckon he... I reckon nah, he I'm not going to say get Dan Gorringe. You're going to uh, say that? Oh, you're not. Give me another go. Give me another go. Um... You got to get here to salvage it, uh, something. Just throw a throw a throw a guess out there if you'd like, or we can just move on and Lucky can claim the win. <laughs> oh, I've got no idea. Who would honest. it be? So maybe Stephen May. Is that your guess? I'll go. Jeez, if he's got it here, it's an eight nil win. Maybe I think that equals the biggest win in where do we begin quiz history? We'll do a bit of a drum roll. <laughs> it's incorrect. <laughs> <sighs> All right. So, Jai, it's all you now. Give me another clue. Give me a... Oh, no, but can't do that, can you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, oh, Gary Ablett? No, he wouldn't be 29. He'd be... Okay, I'll, 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 I'll let so you go, Gary. What's 92, 29? Wait, tw- no, wait, what would it be? 
Yeah. He debuted in 2011. Yeah, 29. Oh, he debuted in 2011. Yeah, oh, he's okay. born in Yeah, 29. Debut 2011. Um, 29. Maybe, who play that team? Gold, uh, doesn't have to be Gold Coast, I guess. Lost to Melbourne on debut in round Sometime, three. Sometimes he does your initials. So is there anybody JC? He's done that before. He does the guest initials for the uh, Who Am I? <laughs> oh, that's, I, don't, I, don't, I can't remember anything. JC. Okay. I'll Josh. Uh, no. I was on the track one night. Josh... Carmichael? Is that... No, not... not. <laughs> keep going. Uh, I, I want you to get... Josh Carmichael Hunt? Is that you doing? <laughs> keep going, keep going. Josh, JC. Josh. I'm, I'm handing you to on a, on a plate here for the four Mate, points. I, J- L- lucky is too. I think we both want you to... I know, I know you want me to get it, but <laughs> I don't know the last name. Is it Josh? Yeah. Josh. Who? Josh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick myself because I'll know the person, but like I just don't know the, who, who they are right now. Should I move it on? Josh, 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 Josh. Um, Thrilling podcast in this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pass it on. Pass it on? Okay. I've got no idea. You've got no idea? No. Oh, you've, you've got Go to anyway, the three-point you... clue. Go to the three-point clue. <laughs> okay, no, I'll open it back up to both of you, actually. Uh, yeah, make it, make it a bit fairer. For three points. Since being taken at pick seven in the 2010 national draft, I've played 170. Oh, Josh Caddy. Josh Caddy. Oh, okay, got ya. Bit of a drum roll. Yeah, uh, I would have never said Josh Caddy. Yeah, me either. Oh. We all know the answer. It is, of course, Josh Caddy. Very nicely. Nice. Done. Well, he's born on my birthday, do you? That's a 7-0 win for you. Well done. You? There you go, mate. I'll have to get nude soon, mate. Yeah. Do a little nudie lap. <laughs> Um, oh, mate, absolute pleasure to have you on, Jai. And yeah, the quiz was a lot of fun for me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good to have you in the studio. Thanks, Matt. Thanks for having me. Um, next time, I'll make sure I win a few. Yeah. Funny oath. Studying hard, I like it. We'll see you next week, guys. <laughs>